In this lecture, we'll look at variadic functions, which is a side topic that arises indirectly from our discussion of printf formats for different integer sizes. And we'll look at integer truncation. So after hearing in the prior segment about all the specialized format specifiers in Scanf, you'd reasonably expect the same ones to be used for printf, but uh, no. Uh, as lines 23 and 24 here illustrate, you use percent %d and percent %u for all int sizes, characters, shorts, ints, except for longs, and in that case you use percent %ld and percent %lu. So what gives here? This is just the tip of a deeper iceberg. So let's do another digression and talk a bit about variadic functions. Think for a bit about what the parameter declarations must look like for printf and scanf. The first parameter for either is a character pointer for the format string, as we've discussed in earlier lectures. But what about the rest? They change for each call, depending on the number and types of the variables we print or scan. Printf and scanf are variadic. They permit varying numbers and types of parameters. How can one function header cover all those possibilities? How do you say in a function prototype, allow lots of possibilities here? Here are the full prototypes for printf and scanf. The uh, dot 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 here is not some shorthand on my part. It's literal C code and it's allowed as the final parameter in any function header or prototype. It's C's way of saying, yeah, whatever, and thus allowing any number and type of parameters for the last part of the header. So we may pass whatever we merry well please to printf and scanf after we pass the format string. Well, this sounds great. Maybe all our functions should do this so we can pass whatever we like. But on closer examination, perhaps not. For instance, how do printf and scanf access those unspecified parameters. They don't have any names. The answer is part of a bigger discussion we'll have later regarding the runtime stack. But for a quick overview, let's assume that parameters are all stored one after another in memory. So if the format string is %d, printf expects us to pass an int after the format string, e.g. printf %d, i1. And i1 would follow the pointer parameter format in memory. So using that, let's try to answer question one. Decipher the code, which uh, code here I'll copy into the uh, lecture notes. Decipher this in the context of this printf call we were looking at, including drawing pointer diagrams. Explain what it does. You may need to make a few intelligent guesses, but when you see the answer, it should click strongly with what we just discussed. Coming back from a pause there. It first gets the address of the format pointer parameter. And that goes into temp cast as a character pointer, a sort of generic pointer. Then it increases temp by four bytes because temp is that generic character pointer with a target size of 1, and size of format is 4. Now it has the address of whatever is immediately after format, which presumably is the integer i1. Now it copies that address into i pointer as an integer pointer, and finally dereferences i pointer to get the integer that is presumably right after format. That is some nasty C code. And as you've probably surmised, it's what printf and scanf do to get the unnamed parameters that follow their format pointer parameter. From this, you can see why the format specifiers matter so much. They're the only way that printf and scanf know what data to expect. There are no named typed parameters to tell them what's in memory after the format parameter. The format specifiers are all they have to go on. So in light of this, and assuming that the code from question one that we just answered is, is used by printf or scanf, what do the following lines do? Explain exactly what happens. Coming back from pause, they mindlessly follow the pointer logic from question one and grab whatever four bytes follow their format pointer. In the case of printf, 
those four bytes provide an interesting and random integer value to print. In the case of scanf, they form, rather more frighteningly, a random address value to follow, and into which to put an integer from the input. If we're lucky, it won't be divisible by four, and we'll get a clean bus error or maybe a seg fault. But it could be a very unlucky bug indeed. Okay, then what about uh, this instead? What subtle disaster results from this? Pause and think about that. And the answer there? There is at least a valid address after format for scanf to grab, but it's the address of a 2-byte short. While scanf will expect the address of a 4-byte int, scanf will write 4 bytes at that short address, of which the first two will go into s, and the next two will overwrite whatever follows s, providing an interesting and probably unlucky bug. So in light of these questions, maybe named typed parameters do have their advantages over the uh, free-for-all variadic approach. But sometimes the value of allowing any number of parameters is worth the complexity and the fragility of a variadic function. Now, there is one thing C does to make variadic functions a little less vulnerable to mix-ups in parameter types. Any small integer, a character or a short, is automatically expanded to a full int size before being passed to a variadic function. This reduces the number of possible parameter types, and it makes a function like printf both simpler and less buggy. But it interestingly means that you cannot actually pass a care or a short to printf. They'll be automatically promoted to an int. So there's no need for short integer format specifiers like %hd or %hu in printf. Everything's a full-sized int by the time printf sees it. But um, what about %c format specifier? Doesn't that require passing a care? Nope. Any care you pass to printf gets pumped up to a full int, containing the same ASCII value as the care. And printf actually expects an int when it sees a %c format specifier. You can pass full ints to printf to satisfy a %c specifier, as long as they contain an ASCII code. But two caveats here. First, this promotion doesn't apply to longs. This is more of Kernahan and Ritchie making it up as they go along. So printf does need the %ld and %lu specifiers if you pass longs or unsigned longs. And second, this promotion doesn't apply at all to pointers, only int values or integer values. There's no reasonable way to promote a short pointer into an int pointer. You'd have to somehow expand its 2-byte short target into a 4-byte integer target. So scanf requires different specifiers for each int type. So here's question 4. Earlier in this topic, we discussed the fact that on all modern machines, a long is actually the same size as an int. Assuming we're not concerned about our code running correctly on some two-decade-old dinosaur, is there any harm in just using %d or %u for a long and unsigned long, since there really is no size difference between longs and ints? It's more a software engineering question, really, than a purely technical one. Coming back from a pause there. There may be several reasonable responses, but the general answer is no, it's not okay. Following a standard, even if it's just a formality, results in better design. For a concrete example, note that nothing in the C standard prevents some future 64-bit C compiler from making a long occupy 4 bytes, or 8 bytes, I'm sorry, instead of 4. And on such a machine, printfs using %ld and %lu would still work, but those sliding by with a %d and a %u for longs would not work. It's an example of a larger phenomenon in software engineering. It's a common problem for a standard to start to drift if some aspect of it becomes moot, like the distinction between ints and longs is currently. But allowing such drift automatically makes code broken if future implementations of the same standard end up caring about the distinction that is presently moot. The final topic here, to finish up the example code, let's look at uh, line 26 which shows what happens when we assign values from a larger int, li, into a smaller one. Variable li contains a value a little in excess of 1 billion, which value we assign into a care and a short. And uh, the value in li is entered in the scanf right there. Then we print the results of the assignments. When you assign from a larger int into a smaller one, only the bottommost bytes of the larger int are copied into the smaller one. If the larger int contains a small value that only uses the bottom bytes and leaves the uh, 
higher ones as all zeros, then the value remains unchanged. But if the value in the larger int uses the higher bytes, then the value is truncated by the loss of those higher bytes. As you can see from the output, C and S contain rather different values from uh, Li. The value 1,073,750,017, and that in binary, is actually this pattern here, which uh, uses all four bytes of Li. Now, assignment into S retains just the uh, bottom two bytes, which have the value 001, as you can see, uh, blah, 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 and that's uh, 8193 in uh, uh, decimal. Assignment into C retains just the bottommost byte, which has the value 1. Now, in some languages, like Java, assigning from a larger to a smaller int requires an explicit typecast. You'd have to say S equals short Li to indicate that the programmer is aware of what he or she is doing. C being the language it is, no such cast is required, though a good C compiler will at least warn you. And of course, assigning from a smaller int to, into a larger one is, is always okay, and it results in no surprises.